Our mission at Resilient Advisor is to have a significant impact on the retirement crisis by educating and empowering financial advisors to better serve their clients. We bring you industry thought leaders and experts to help you make a difference in the lives of your clients. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Resilient Advisor. My name is Jay Coulter, and this is the second installment of The Blockchain Report with my friend Dan Weiskopf, where we bring you some analysis from a monthly report that Dan and his team put out. Dan, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Jay, for having me. Looking forward to it. All right, let's start very high level. In your report for July, you guys talk about the possibility of a Bitcoin ETF, and there, there's been some movement in the industry. What are you guys seeing? Listen, it's going to come about. We think it might come about in the fourth quarter, maybe in the first quarter, but it's going to come about sometime for sure in 2022. Now, exactly the structure of it is up for debate. Because yeah, part of the structure thought is this could be a futures contract, correct? Hey, exactly. And structure matters, as I always like to say. You do like to say structure matters because it does. So walk, walk me through that as a novice. So when I look at the oil futures ETFs, when I look at some of the futures-based commodity broadbasket ETFs, those things get front run all day long and there's the opportunity for manipulation. What would we have to be concerned about if it was a futures-based product? Well, if it's futures, the question is going to be how far out do they go on the curve? But I think they're going to be talking very short term with these futures contracts, maybe month to month, which actually might mean there isn't that much of an issue. OK, well, I look forward to it. I hope they can get some products out into the marketplace. All right. So let's talk about what you guys saw in the marketplace as it relates specifically to blockchain holdings. So inside your portfolio, there were some sales and some trims. What'd you see? Yeah, you know, sometimes it's the subtle changes that you make that are most important. Within the context of the ETF wrapper, we made a lot of small changes, but on the larger side, we trimmed Digital Garage, and we also increased Riot Blockchain after I visited the site. And then we also increased GBTC slightly as well. All right. So let's go back to the sales and trims specifically of those. Which one is the most notable? Oh, I think Riot Blockchain. And, and this is a perfect example of active management, right? With Riot Blockchain, I visited the site. Frankly, I was I was really impressed. It's a huge facility. And that, I think, is a differentiation between ourselves and, and some of the competitors that we actually talk to management teams. Yeah. Where are they located? In Texas. Texas. In Texas now, yeah. tell me, is it a big facility? Are, are they mining? They are mining every day. They're building every day. They're increasing their capacity. And actually, one of the things that I mentioned separate from Riot Blockchain is, as an example, Marathon uh, Digital, right? Um, they reported 65% sequential month-to-month -month growth. Now, that's different than Riot, but it's an example of how these facilities and how these miners are going to be growing, right? That's mm -hmm. very powerful. So when they say 65% month over month growth, are they talking about the number of coins they've mined or the value of the coins? Like, do they get extra an extra lift as Bitcoin's price goes up or are they hurt as it goes down? Yeah, you know, that's a great point. I'm glad you bring that up because at the end of the day, there was a lot of hoopla back in, back in June, right, about the difficulty level. Well, in July, we saw some of the benefits. Out of China, there were more miners that went offline and a lot of the North American miners that we own saw massive increase in terms of the number of Bitcoin that were produced. Now, the price, as you pointed out, is an extra VIG, right? And at times can be very, very powerful as well. I bet. I bet that makes it difficult to model just because of the volatility in the underlying asset. It does. It does. The price is very difficult to model, but the number of mines, mines the, the actual equipment, isn't so difficult to, to model. Actually, it's, it's very simple because sequentially you can see going forward how many um, uh, S19s are coming on to production. Let's pivot to a couple other holdings in the report, Voyager and Silvergate. What did you see last month? 
Yeah, again, you know, um, in, 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 we're looking at like 65 to 75% growth um, quarter to quarter out of Voyager, right? Those are huge numbers. And in the case of Silvergate, we're talking about almost a quarter of trillion dollars, okay, of volume that's going through this, this network. These these are going to be big businesses in the future. Mm -hmm. All right. And let's wrap up with Hive. Hive is another mining company, and they actually are unique uh, in, in, the, in the context that they were very early as a public company. In fact, they were the first um, publicly traded mining company that came public. And they announced that they're going to be at a run rate of $200 million. You know, that's that's a big number out of a small company. Yeah, it definitely is. All right. So to download your copy of the blockchain report, please visit blockchain or block, B-L-O-K, dash chain, dash monthly. Or you can go and view it in or click the link in the show notes. Dan, I'd be remiss if we didn't wrap up with a little conversation about your new series. Could you tell listeners and viewers a little bit about the new blockchain interviews that you're hosting? Well, Jay, I'm glad you brought that up, actually. You know, I have some really wonderful conversations with some of these CEOs, and now I'm I'm getting the opportunity to share some of the one-on-one -on -one conversations that I'm having with some of the CEOs on strategy. And they're like due diligence conversations that I'm having with them. So I look forward to other people learning more about the industry in these conversations. Yeah, well, hang on. I'm not letting you off that easy. Let's talk about some of the names that you have coming on the show. And and you've even launched your first one. Yeah. So so we did uh, Michael Saylor as the first one. And Fred Teal's coming up. Uh, and he's the CEO of, of um, Marathon. And he brings a lot of great insights as well. And, of course, we're also going to follow up with Voyager and Silvergate. Awesome. I, I look forward to seeing those. You can view the Sailor interview right now on ETF Trends on the Blockchain channel, as well as the Toroso Investments YouTube channel. Dan, is that correct? That is correct. And one other point that I'd make, we're going to be talking also to private companies, which is going to make this unique as a series as well. Yep. If you're interested in the blockchain, you have to get the blockchain uh, newsletters, please visit block-chain-monthly and grab a copy. Dan, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Jay.